Hey, Hey, Tony. Good. Good, good. Good, um, It's been a pretty good year for you so far, hasn't it? Yeah, no, it's been great. It's I like playing every week at Celtic and then getting my first international caps. It's just it's gone as well as it probably could have gone. What about Champions League? I mean, have you noticed it being a step up a, a higher level? Yeah, it is. Like compared to the to the Scottish League, it is. It like you're playing against top top quality opposition, and I suppose midweek last week we kind of seen that firsthand. You know, we went down to ten men and Atletico just sort of controlled the game from then on. And, and you could see the quality they had, and and um, it was tough, but it's still good experiences playing every like playing in those games, playing against the best in the world, and I'm enjoying it. And what about the international experience then? It took a long time, I guess, but to be finally called up for the senior squad. Yeah, look, I had to be patient. I was in a few squads, and and uh, never got the cap look like in the last couple of years, and to finally get it, and that was brilliant. Um, and yeah, it is. It's it's. A, a high level of football and there's a lot on the line obviously all these qualifiers like you pretty much need to win as many of them as you can so the, the pressure is there and, and, and they're tough games but it, it was a good experience and um, no, I'm, I'm delighted that it happened for me Netherlands away but that's probably as big a test as you can get yeah yeah um, look it's going to be tough they're a top side but look we, we, we know like the situation we haven't qualified We've nothing to lose. We can go there, express ourselves, and, and just try and win the game. And it'd be a great away win for us. Like you don't really get many big away wins in in um, international football. So that's that's our focus. Thanks. Liam, in terms of your favourite position, I suppose if you played on the left, I think of the first cap, second cap, of course, at second half, I'm assuming you'd have your favourite player in the second half. I know you're just happy to have the jersey. I presume your preferred position to play in the second defence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just hold that there. Oh yeah. No, you'd be right, yeah. I look as long if I have the jersey and I'm playing, I'm happy. It doesn't matter where where I'm playing, I play anywhere. Um I was I just, I was, I've played in different positions and wherever I'm asked to play I'll play but I do love playing centre half yeah probably is my preferred position obviously it's been an amazing year for you on a personal level where does winning that first cap out a little while ago now you've got two where does that race in terms of career highlights so far I'd say for me it's top because like it's the one thing as a kid I always wanted you know and you, can, you can't as a kid you can, like, you can say oh I'd love to play in the Premier League and this but that playing for Ireland and, and like I think the next best thing would be playing in a major tournament for Ireland and um, or the, the only thing that would top it would be to play in a in a major tournament for Ireland and like yeah that it probably is my biggest achievement today yeah obviously you know with Stephen the game the cap um, things not looking so good for the manager this week in terms of your own relationship and you know the vote of confidence that, that Stephen gave you how have you found working with him I love I've loved working with Stephen like he's he sort of brought me into the 21 under 21s when he was manager there and I was at UCD and maybe there was players playing at a higher level or playing in academies at Premier League clubs and I was picked ahead of them because I was playing men's football and he knew the importance of that and he's always backed me I suppose um, and I've enjoyed working with him and that's all I can say about him you know he, I think he's, he's good at what he does and, and he's, he's showed a lot of faith in me and I really appreciate that Is it difficult to see him going through what he's going through at the moment? Yeah definitely like the results like it's down to us as well and, and they haven't been good enough everyone can see that and, and um, it's tough to because you know he loves the, the job so much and, and it's the, the dream job obviously for someone like him and yeah it's, it's tough to go through that Kevin can you please? Uh, hi Lee uh, Brandon Rodgers described you as one of the biggest surprises of his career how do you think you're surprised? Um, I suppose at the start of the year I think I came back into pre-season with Celtic and I was sort of... Most people thought I was going to go back to Aberdeen. It was sort of in the pipeline. There was um, talks of it happening. And then obviously the few injuries happened. I think, I think I've surprised him in the sense that I maybe wasn't fully in the picture and then a couple of injuries happened and I was thrown straight in and just did well and I've sort of held a, held a place now. And, and that, that's it, yeah. Yeah, and obviously you've been at such a high... Um, just being sort of 
focused and um, yeah I think that's the main difference is you kind of have to be always switched on playing against these high level, high level opposition you know they can hurt you in a split second and like we've seen that in the last few weeks but um, I think that's where it's improving the most mentally I suppose um, I kind of always back myself technically to, to play at high levels but it's been switched on all the time that I've had to sort of learn to do and, and that's what I'm trying to improve now Yeah, definitely. I've actually just met Stephen Guinness and he presented me with my um, PFAI Team of the Year medal from 2021. I never got it because I'd gone to Celtic before the awards, so that was a nice touch. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's a good path. The League of Ireland's brilliant and the fact that young players aren't really able to go to the UK as early because of Brexit, I think it's brilliant um, because I've seen, I keep an eye on the league and you see the likes of, as well as an example, uh, Curtis at Pats, he's played a lot of senior games and he's, he's, he's still only like 17 or 18, I think. And that's going to like really help him in his career moving forward. He'll go on now. Obviously, he might stay at Pats, but like if he goes on now, he has senior games under his belt and, and clubs abroad really like value that. So no, it's a great, it is, it's a great pathway and I do hope that more people follow that. Route. Kevin? Uh, Liam, just follow on with Gav Asier, pathway. Did you think Champions League football possible team when you were at UCD or Rovers or even on loan in Aberdeen did, did it ever become because you made it realistic effort at UCD today so when did it seem possible for you? I don't know it was probably the week before it happened or something like I, I never thought no I didn't really think at UCD that that's where I'd end up um, I was just focused I've never really looked too far ahead into the future so at UCD Rovers even Aberdeen I was just focusing on the next game and con- consistently doing well Um but yeah, once I once the couple of injuries, there was a couple of injuries, and I played, um, played against Rangers and did well. I thought, oh, well, maybe I can keep this spot here and and play these massive games coming up. And now it's been a great experience. Because a lot of it can be about belief. So where, where did it come from for you? Just was it just the fact you're playing with men from such an early age, or what was it that kind of kept you going? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, starting at seventeen. Well, I started at sixteen with my. Uh, in the Leinster Senior League with Arklow Town like that's when I started playing with men so being that young you kind of have to learn fast like how, how to handle yourself in that environment and um, no it's definitely it's definitely helped Does it feel different the game was asked for example the Glenagon match was obviously not very good for yourself does it feel different playing at that level as it does play for Ireland but it's never already similar Champions League in Ireland or I'd say that they're quite similar, especially like coming up against teams like Holland, like in France in our group. I'd say is a similar level to the Champions League. Yeah, I I don't like the Greek. The Greek game was was a similar level to say, like we played Lazio final. I think that Atletico Madrid game. I don't think I've played against an opposition who have controlled the game like that and done that well yet. But I'm sure, like France, Netherlands, those sort of big nations would be that that sort of elite standard. Yeah. Just go back here, you mentioned Arklow. A lot of players are marked out for starting or wanted to 14, 15 year olds nowadays agents that go on trial with European clubs. But when you start with Arklow Town, did you think you could be a professional? Was that your aim just to, just to play with your mates to be a world player? What's your thoughts when you start playing with Arklow? When, it, like, I was just, I suppose I went to um, Joey's. Uh, when I was 14 for about a month or two and it didn't work out for me and I went back just and the main thing I wanted to do was enjoy my football play with my mates I was playing like under 16 county Gaelic football for Wicklow as well and I was enjoying that and then it came to a stage where I had to pick one or the other and it wasn't an easy decision and I think I just picked football because I knew I, I sort of had a, had a chance to go and get a scholarship and I've never looked too far into the future about being a professional it was always oh well I'll go and get a scholarship at UCD see how it goes I'll go and do these trials for the school Leinster schools teams and stuff like that and see how it goes and I've always sort of it's always really it's worked out for me well that way you said Joey like they big nursery did you think you weren't good enough for Joey's that they were a step above what you, what you were it wasn't I didn't think I was good enough I just didn't I wasn't there was players playing ahead of me they sort of had players playing ahead of me and, and that's why it didn't work out but I wouldn't I wouldn't like oh, it's not that's that's football like people have opinions and they, I was younger and I've improved a lot since then so maybe they were they were better than me at the time but um, 
no, I've always sort of taken it like small steps, and and that's how it's how it's worked out. And just on Celtic, um, very few teams in football go from beating 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 six nil in one game, and the next game they win win six nil. It's a huge swing. Like, how do you handle that challenge of being the, the demands in Scotland? Was you expected to win every week and just challenge it as well? Yeah, it's a good question. Like, you feel more pressure playing in the league. Well, I do for Celtic than I would in the Champions League because the Champions League, you know, like these are top, top opposition and it'd be brilliant to beat them and there's less pressure. But when you're playing every week in the league, if you don't, if you draw a game, like it's, it's a bad result. You know, if you draw any game against anyone, it's a bad result and that, that brings a lot of pressure. So it's kind of weird in a way you think, oh, you'd be more nervous for the big nights, the big European nights. But in a way, it's sort of where the pressure is more on league games because... You know, you can't consistently have to win to win that league. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a new experience sort of dealing with that. Ashley, please. Yeah, Kylie, Ashley, you're from off the ball. Just talking there about your journey and where you came from to playing for a team like Celtic. What does it mean to you to play for Celtic? Ah, uh, it's massive. Like it's for me and my family, and I, like they're all so proud. I'm proud of myself. Um, being Irish as well, it's it, there's a connection there. Um, there's a lot, of, a big fan base in Ireland, and for me to be sort of representing the Irish now at Celtic, it's it's a, it's great, and and I'm sort of trying to enjoy every minute of it because you know, it, it, who knows how long it'll last. But yeah. And just when you spoke about the Champions League, you hear a lot of players, top players, speak about playing at Celtic Park. What was it like for you? Can you describe it walking out playing the Champions League game there? Yeah, it's surreal. Like when you when the music goes off, it actually gets drowned out by the noise of the fans. You can't hear a thing. It's, it's carnage. Um, but I just I just try and take it in because it, again, like who knows how many games I'm gonna play in the Champions League. You have to, and especially at Celtic Park, it's it's extra special. Um, so I just try and take it all in and enjoy it and stay calm before the game because it, you could easily lose the run of yourself like in the atmosphere and and that's the main thing is just to stay calm. Paul Ahead, please. Um, we've yeah. seen Irish, young Irish players go away to Celtic over years before, probably younger maybe than yourself when you went away. But you might have been there for two or three years, but never really played for them or were in new teams. What, what is it about Celtic that's so hard for Irish players to crack? And I know you touched on yourself going over a bit later there, and your league part of background probably helped you, but why, why is it such a tough club for Irish kids? Yeah, um, I think it's a tough club for any young player, really, because there's a massive squad there I don't know, there's over 30 players in our first team squad and um, like they, they it's, a, it's a business for for parts of the club it's a business you know they they buy and sell a lot of players and they're constantly buying new young players so there's just it's tough competition um, and like I got a bit of luck with injuries at the start of the year and it's sort of given me a chance to to get in and maybe other young Irish players haven't had that little bit of luck where they've been there thereabouts but someone else has just pipped them and if that player does well then they're not really going to get a chance and I think that's <clears throat> that's the main thing I think it takes a bit of luck at, it's because of the amount of young players and the amount of I suppose they they buy players and, and sell players a lot so the ins and outs sort of don't help that I think Liam you, you said it looked like you have gone back to Aberdeen Obviously, what's transpired has been a lot better. But would you have been happy that at the time? Do you felt okay? This is okay. This is a bad place to for me to be at this stage of my career. Yeah, hundred percent. Like my thought process was, and I spoke. Obviously, at the end of my loan, they were spoke to me and told me they were keen to have me back for a year, eighteen months, and and move me on. And that I loved Aberdeen. Aberdeen's a brilliant football club, man. Um, and they obviously are playing in the in the Conference League this year, and I was happy go back and play consistently at that level and try and try and win a, a cup or finish third in the in the Scottish League and play in the Conference League and then um, and do that for a year, eighteen months and try and get a move, maybe set out there. Whatever. But yeah, it, it never happened for whatever reason, but I was I, I was like hoping to, like I was really looking forward to, to trying to get back there and do that. But it's worked out better obviously for me now um, and I'm happy it has. Um, you're, you're playing with real maturity this season. Um, for a second half, sometimes that doesn't come until late, late twenties, that sort of thing. So, when you went over to uh, Scotland late, um, I think the early years in the League of Ireland have sort of actually 
help to push on your maturity that it can adopt it quicker once you got there? Yeah, definitely. I think um, at UCD, I suppose, in my last year there, I would have been one of the older players and I captained the team. I was only 21, but you know what the, the age profile is like at, at UCD. And then that probably helped. Like There was responsibility on me, obviously, going on the Rovers. Then you play with players like Ronan Finn and Joey O'Brien and and like Alan Mann as these senior pros and you take little bits from them and how they sort of carry themselves and, and like they're role models for younger players so that's sort of what I've learned from and, and I think I think the year away at Aberdeen as well has got me up to speed with with the level of, of Scottish football because going from Ireland to Scotland going from Ireland to Celtic is, is quite a, a big jump and I think Aberdeen helped me bridge that gap as well uh, Liam, uh, there's not so many Gael Gores in Glasgow, uh, but uh, congratulations on your move. I, I always get on a little quirky road. Um, Paul McShane, Wicklow man, Gaelic background. Yeah. Oh, no, did you any contact with him? Did he, did he, 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 he got the Irish caps as well. Has he been in touch with any chance? No, no. I did. Um, his, his brother coached me, though. Um, yeah. John, his brother coached me in the Leinster. Uh, the Lancer youth team when I was about 16 or 17 but I've never, no, never had Paul McShane no. yeah, and you mentioned that you did play underage for a kill one time um, but never won a Lancer championship no, no uh, I, did, I don't think I got anywhere near you ever see yourself coming back and put on the blue jersey uh, who knows I'd love to I always think like I'd love to go back even go play for my club my local club Spandau I've got a lot of family yeah. that play for them and, and I'd love to and they actually are doing quite well they've, they've won an um, intermediate championship in Wicklow I think so it's the first year they'll be Senior now, for a long time I think. But um, you played football in Ireland, didn't you? Not Ireland, no. Not just football. Just football. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Sunday. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd love to, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.